How's it going everybody? Cameron with AC7 Owners with a very fast video for you. Um, I'm about to start doing some work on the cooling system from our car by upgrading the Merc Racing uh, heat exchanger. I've got a version one from them. I've had it on for car for two years. I love it. Uh, but I'm about to upgrade by putting the four liter twin turbo heat exchanger that's meant for the RS6 and S6s uh, or RS7s, S7s. I'm about to put one of those on my 30T. Uh, they work on there. It's just a lot more volume of coolant. should keep everything a lot cooler keep the ITs down but in preparation for that I'm going to be swapping out my stripped out uh, supercharger bleed screws with the 034 bleed screws these are metal ones they have the groove built into them to where that uh, allows them to bleed let me get to focus here any day now there we go so as I rotate this around you can see that channel there that channel is uh, just like the OEM ones as you back it out, fluid can come up that so that you can bleed them without having to remove the screw completely. It's got these nice little rubber gaskets on here, but these should not strip. These won't wear out on top. Uh, if we come over here, I'll show you my OEM ones and you can see those are very stripped. That's my uh, passenger side. And then on this side, I've got my driver side. That one doesn't look as bad as uh, this one, but um, they're, they're both, you know, worn out a little bit. No matter what, these things get brittle over time and they break. And so I am going to show you guys how to remove a stripped supercharger cooler bleed, uh, bleed screw and replace it with the 034 screw. So here we go. So there are a couple ways to remove these. If they're stripped, you can, uh, get a wrench on here potentially and, you know, clamp down and try and turn it. Uh, but there is a chance that that could put too much pressure on this and snap it off in the supercharger. So what most people do is they take a screwdriver and they heat it up really hot and they wedge it down in there and melt it into the plastic and then pull it out and let it cool and then use that to slowly back it out here. So the first thing I'm going to do just to try and aid and everything, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of WD-40 on each side just to maybe penetrate in here and allow it to uh, un, you know, unscrew a little bit easier. I've already got my stove heating up. I'm going to get my screwdriver heated up in a little bit and we'll see what we can do. I'm really fortunate because I actually have an oven out in my garage. And so I can just do this and then I can run it over to the car. I'm gonna experiment with this. I'm gonna keep it in here for about a minute or so. Just remember when you do this to be extremely careful. Don't let this hit any fuel lines, any plastic lines. You pretty much don't touch anything other than this bleed screw. When you set it in there, don't just jam it in there. You want to ease it in so that you don't go too deep. You just want it in there enough to where you can melt the plastic to the point that uh, you can pull it out and let it cool and then put the screwdriver in it afterwards and remove it. All right, so as you can see, I've put some paper towels here just to protect things. Just a slow push. And we're gonna let that cool off for a little bit. I'm gonna go heat it up and do it again. All right, so once again, and I've probably only kept the screwdriver on the heat for about a minute each time here. And you can see it does exactly what we need. Okay, I'm going to try and get a good look at this screw here so you can see what we did. And you can see the indention that we made with the uh, screwdriver on each side. So those have cooled down. We should be able to remove these. So we got the paper towels in place so that we can uh, hopefully catch any coolant that comes out. We'll remove these. There shouldn't be anything that comes flying out of here. I've got the lid on, so everything should stay under pressure for the most part. I don't expect coolant to come flying out, but I got the towels there just in case. I'm going to try and make the swap as quickly as possible. Let's hope that this trick works out pretty well. All right, we're going to give it a go and see how this works. Uh, I've got my 034 screws right by me, so hopefully this should work out pretty easily. Yep, there it goes. That turned and broke there. And it broke off inside the supercharger. So 
That is a problem. So we're gonna have to reassess this and figure out what we need to do. Let's go ahead and try and break off the other one. There we go, that one is screwing off easily. And a little bit of supercharger coolant coming out. So we're gonna try and make this swap. I'm gonna actually screw this back in a little bit because I just realized I don't have the tool to tighten this up all the way. So I'm gonna tighten that back up just for a bit, just nice and snug and I'll go get the tool so that I can install this correctly. Okay, now we're a little bit more prepared. So we're going to back this screw out and get the other one going back in. This is a seven millimeter. Uh, so that's what we got. We got a seven millimeter socket ready to go. You can see the coolant coming out, which I guess that's a good sign that the supercharger had the correct amount of coolant. Get that out. We're just gonna set this here for now. We'll get this started. Start these by hand. Get them going down. And remember, these just need to be snug. They don't need to be over tightened at all. So, don't forget your O ring when you put these back on. And just snug. So, there we go. Now, let's see what we can do about that one. Okay, guys, so you can see my predicament. The head of my passenger side bleed screw snapped off. Um, I, I didn't wrench down on it hard. It was just old and brittle. So uh, I'm going to try a trick. I'm going to use a Torx bit. I'm going to heat it up and see if I can't sink it down into what's left there and then uh, try and work it out. If uh, it looks like it's going to give me a lot of signs of resistance and I'm not going to really try and go hard at it, uh, at that point, I'm just going to go get an extractor set to remove it correctly. So we'll see if this works. All right, this wasn't quite hot enough, so I'm gonna get it up even hotter. Okay, let's try this again. All right, that's not quite hot enough. This is just not getting hot enough. I don't know if it's just this type of tip doesn't get very hot. So I'm gonna try and figure out something else. All right, let's see if we can do it with this one. That gave me a little bit more uh, meltage there, so I'm gonna do that one more time. All right, I got pretty deep in that one. So I'm gonna pull that out. Oh, I need to make sure that stays. So I'm gonna sit there. I'm going to let that cool off, and then I think I should be able to get that one out. Okay, that's had a little bit of time to cool off, so let's see if this worked. Just remember to run this under cold water or something to cool it off. Let me get in here. Slowly turn. And I don't know if that's gonna work or not. Doesn't feel like it's wanting to come out. It feels like it's pretty good and seized in there. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna get it. As you can see, I've got a much bigger hole in there now, and that's because I used a Phillips head here. Uh, my philosophy when I did this was start off small, so go with like a small Torx bit. That didn't work out, went with a small flat head that started to work, and then it started to pry apart. And so I went ahead and heated up this uh, Phillips head and put it in there, and I think it's gonna work. So let's, let's see if we can get this out of here. It's pretty good and deep in there, and yeah, there it goes. 
All right, I'm gonna set this flashlight down and get ready to pull this thing out and then put in the uh, the new 034 bleed screw. Real quick before I do that though, once this comes out, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take a quick peek and make sure it doesn't look like there's any plastic in there that I might need to vacuum out or something like that. We obviously don't want plastic floating through the supercharger system. So uh, if you have to do this, whenever you heat your screwdrivers up, remember it's really hot, don't hit that that rubber gasket there. Don't hit anything other than what you're trying to extract out of there. So uh, let me get this swap going. We'll see how it works. You guys can see it's even still wanting to break apart there, but you know, we got this out now to the point. It doesn't look like there's going to be any damaged plastic in there. There's some little bits on top. I'm gonna go ahead and try and grab off to make sure that those don't fall in on accident. Go ahead and get this, get my 034 screw ready. Got it out, I'm gonna take a peek in there. Nothing inside it. We got some pieces there on the edge, so let's clean those up before we put this 034 screw in. Just gonna use a tiny pick here to clean this stuff out of the way. I'm just going to knock it off to the side so it's no threat to the new screw and then we'll just vacuum that stuff up here in a bit. So no supercharger, I'm sorry, no coolant came out here. I looked in there and it looks like it's appropriate, but I do have an IAT issue, so I've got air somewhere in my system. Um, and we're gonna remedy that whenever I go in here to install my new Merc Racing heat exchanger. So once again, we're gonna snug this down and I'm gonna clean this stuff up and then I'm gonna give you guys a little bit better of a look at what we were dealing with there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the car on and we're gonna inspect the uh, new bleed screws and make sure that there's no coolant escaping from either of the bleed screws to make sure we got a good fit. Don't forget to put your heat shields back in here. This one protects uh, the heat from the supercharger from getting to your throttle body and intake. That one protects it from getting uh, to your oil filter housing and some of your other lines. So those are important, make sure those are back in there. So uh, let me get it turned on and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so nothing's leaking, so that's a good thing. Job well done, it's all uh, put back together. We just gotta put our cover back on there and we're done inside the engine bay. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get everything cleaned up, and then I'm gonna show you guys what my bleed screw that failed, that broke off, looked like. And I'll show you uh, the heads of them, what it looked like when I put the screwdrivers in at first, and then what I had to do on that, that second one where I had to extract that plastic screw. Um, Never done this in my life before, so this is a first time for me. So a little nerve-wracking at first. I just made sure I took my time to not hit anything I wasn't supposed to hit. And uh, not gonna lie, that last one, the one that kind of snapped, I was a little worried that I was gonna have to go get an extractor kit, but the uh, Phillips head worked really well for it. So I'll let you guys see that in a second, and uh, we'll go over that. Okay, so before us, we have all the tools that I use today. Uh, these are the three tools that worked, and these are the ones that didn't. So um, to start off with, this is the screw that came out successfully. Um, you can see the indention uh, from when I used this screwdriver and heated it up and went in just fine. And that was able to give me a really good platform to seat in there and remove this screw. Uh, came out without issues. It wasn't stuck into the uh, threading inside the supercharger at all. So came out nice and easy, no problem. This one on the other hand had problems. So you can see here that this is the head of it and 
got you know the indention where I melted with the first screwdriver and it went down into the main part of the screw so it was into the plastic good and deep I don't know if maybe that weakened it to the point where it got a little too melted on the edge and made it snap off but this piece here had a lot of resistance in the actual uh, supercharger bleed port so that means to me that this was torqued down too tight and it was stuck in there no matter what so I think this would have snapped off anyways so when I realized I was going to have to do something with this one, the first thing I did was I tried to heat up the small Torx bit. My philosophy was start off small and then work your way up. Uh, and this bit just would not get hot enough for whatever reason. Uh, so then I moved over to a small flathead. And this got hot enough and it sank down in there good and deep. But when I tried to uh, bring it out, I think it was just a little too warped. You could see my screwdriver is a little warped. So maybe I got a little bit too hot or then this was too thin. So uh, there was enough resistance on this that it actually bent my screwdriver. And so who knows, maybe this was just too small for the job. So after that, I eventually went to this Phillips head, got it good and hot. And you can see it almost looks like it was made for... Uh, or the screw is made for it. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. I know it's not perfectly in focus. It's black, it's dark out here. There you go. But, um, so once I did that, I was able to get this screwdriver in there and then slowly but surely bring it out. Didn't damage anything inside the supercharger bleed port. Obviously an extractor set probably would have made this a lot easier, but if you don't have that at home like I didn't, then this is how you get it out. So anyways, I uh, got the other, uh, the new aftermarket 034 screws, the metal ones in there, so I won't have to worry about doing this ever again. And uh, yeah, I hope this video helps you guys. This camera off of here real fast and talk to y'all. So anyways, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if you have any other comments or suggestions on what people can do to avoid this or to, you know, get these out a little bit easier, feel free to leave them in the comments below. This is just what works for me. Um, pretty soon I'll be doing my swap on the uh, 4.0 T heat exchanger from Merck Racing. That's the their biggest one, the newest one. I can't wait to get it on there as well as the CWA 100 coolant pump and see what my ITs do. Uh, like I said, my ITs are just a little bit high right now. Um, and that's no fault of the heat exchanger I have on there from Merck Racing. There's just just air in the system somewhere for sure. So uh, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna show you guys how to actually manual bleed these systems to ensure that there's nowhere in the system whatsoever. And yeah, uh, I highly suggest you guys get some of these uh, metal bleed screws, especially if you plan on bleeding this manually, you're definitely gonna want those if you're gonna be removing the plastic screws off of your supercharger. But anyways, uh, see you guys on the next video.